This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1096, The No Tracking Budget, by Kelly Long of financialfinesse.com. And I'm Dan, I'm here every single day reading to you from the best personal finance blogs on the web. We put those blogs into podcast form for you. And if you like this crazy idea of reading blogs to you for free, it would be great if you could share this podcast with someone today. Uh, You can email or text them a link to oldpodcast.com or even better, if you're able to subscribe them to the podcast right on their smartphone, go ahead and do that. It's a really big help to keep this show going and growing. And I'll keep this intro nice and short for you today. So for now, let's hear today's post as we start optimizing your life. The No Tracking Budget by Kelly Long of FinancialFinesse.com You don't have to be a financial planner to know that one of the key ingredients of financial security is having a budget. And yet, according to a Gallup poll, only 32% of U.S. households prepare a detailed budget. The purpose of a budget is threefold. One, to ensure you're not spending more than you make. Two, to figure out how much you can actually afford to save. And three, if you are spending more than you make or you'd like to save more, then it helps to figure out where you might be able to cut back. Putting together a budget is one thing, sticking to it is another. The putting together is relatively simple, and while there are lots of tools to help, the sticking to it is where most people give up. So let's talk about that part, assuming you already know how much you need to spend each month on needs versus wants. Confession. I can't tell you exactly how much I spent on dining out last month, and I can't tell you how much I plan to spend on it this month. That's because that number isn't as important to me as first making sure I'm covering all my other financial goals. What I can tell you is how much I'm saving towards several small but important financial priorities so that whatever is left over is what I can spend on things I can go without, such as sushi night, shopping, spa services, or Target. Yeah, Target is a discretionary expense for me, and don't tell me you also haven't discovered their magnetic carts that just attract things. By prioritizing the things I know I need to make happen financially, I essentially back into what I can spend on wants without any tracking beyond setting up an alert to tell me if my account dips below $100. I do this through automatic transfers set to happen each payday. I have a series of savings accounts, one for each financial priority, through an online bank that lets me set up as many different savings accounts as I want. It's the electronic version of the envelope system. My checking account for spending money is at a brick-and-mortar bank, and I have a checking account for bills that's also housed at the online bank. Here are some of the accounts that you might set up. Monthly bills. Separating your known monthly bills into a separate account and then setting them on auto pay might just revolutionize your relationship to money. This account is for things that have due dates and relatively set amounts, like rent or mortgage, cable, cell phone, etc. You may need to estimate for things like electric and gas. I use the highest amount from the past year, which ensures I'm well-funded. What isn't this account for? Things you can pick and choose how much and when to spend each month, like groceries, personal care, and even your dog walker. Yes, this is money you need to spend, but it doesn't have a due date or a set amount, which defeats the purpose. This should be a fixed amount that would only fluctuate if you made a drastic change, like move, cancel cable, etc. Emergency fund. Getting this account funded with three months of expenses was my top priority, so before I even opened another account, I was saving as much as I could into this account. Now it's just there, accruing interest. I can't overemphasize the peace of mind this gives me. Car stuff. This account is for all things car-related, such as insurance, new tires, repairs, registration, things like that. Once it's paid off, I'll start transferring my monthly payment into this account too, so that I can save to buy my next car with cash. Pet medical. Pet insurance can run from $10 to $90 per month, and Consumer Reports found that it's not worth the money for the average healthy pet. Instead, pay yourself the premium so that if and when an expensive injury or illness pops up, you have some money saved. Kid activities. If you have kids, then you know that their extracurricular activities can add up pretty quickly. Try annualizing the costs and transferring one twelfth each month to ease the burden of sign up and gear up season. It takes a little bit of work to get these accounts set up, but it is worth it. I shared this system with a colleague of mine who's a busy mom of two young children, and her email to me says it all. Quote, I just wanted to say thank you. I've separated all my fixed bills through those accounts and set up a couple of savings accounts for shorter-term, larger dollar items, 
Christmas, home improvements, and travel. That way, we don't have to either put off those things or feel guilty about spending money on them. Plus, I set up accounts for the girls for them to earn money and use on toys or whatever, and the transition of seeing the numbers is easier for them because they're still learning math and identifying the value of the paper and coin money. So they earn it in cash, then we add it up and deposit it into our bank, and I transfer the money to their accounts. End quote. If you're having trouble sticking to your budget, why not give it a try? You just listened to the post titled The No Tracking Budget by Kelly Long of FinancialFinesse.com. Okay, that's gonna do it for me for another edition of Optimal Finance Daily. I will be back with you tomorrow as usual. So I'll see you there in the Wednesday show where your optimal life awaits.